So in this presentation, I'll just go over services for campuses um, relevant to distributed high throughput computing in the open science grid. Um, but first I'll talk about um, what is distributed high throughput computing and just a little bit on what is OSG, but you'll hear a little bit more of this later uh, today before our first break. Um, and I'll particularly just give a brief introduction to the services that you'll hear about in subsequent presentations. That includes um, the ability to build local uh, DHTC computing Lauren, systems. Lauren, quick interrupt. You're sharing your presenter view, not the, the, the full view of your slides. All right, thank you. Let me try that again. That should be better. Looks yes. great. All right. So we'll talk about um, how you can build local DHTC capacity on uh, computing systems that you can manage with the Condor software, um, which is also it's a scheduling system that uh, your users would interact with like other scheduling systems. And uh, Greg will talk about um, why HT Condor is, is wonderful and um, really specialized for high throughput computing and how that also makes a difference for um, what we do in OSG and what you as a campus can do to bring your researchers to OSG. Um, we'll also talk about how to contribute your local resources, perhaps backfill excess computing resources or as part of perhaps an award requirement for CC star. Um, you can share those into the OSG to empower um, the very large community of researchers um, across open science. We'll talk about the various ways to support your researchers to use OSG, um, including as Marone emphasized that you can point them today to the OSG Connect service so that they can use OSG right now. Um, you and your staff can also do that too. I'll talk a little bit about DHTC facilitation and um, how we empower campus staff to learn from our own team um, in order to support their researchers to the extent that you desire. Otherwise through OSG Connect, we do all of the facilitation and support of your researchers that you point there. Um, but you may look eventually to having a local submission point. And there are even some campuses here um, who will join us in a later discussion at the end of the day, um, who will talk about how they've navigated these various uh, services relevant to local DHTC capacity and integrating with the open science grid or pointing your researchers to use the open science grid. I'll briefly touch on, as Marone already did, the fact that we offer support and consulting for CC star proposals, proposals including letters of support um, in particular, especially if you have a resource sharing requirement. And all of this is free and open, um, offered to campuses and their researchers by way of the fact that, that we are funded in various ways by the National Science Foundation, and in particular now through PATH. So first, uh, I want to talk a bit about what is distributed high throughput computing for those of you who may not have been um, exposed to the terminology before. I mean, first I'll talk about just the idea of high throughput computing as a principle. Many research uh, computation tasks, and you know, even as we've talked with researchers across many domains, really boil down into um, a set of computations that can be executed independently. And the analogy I often use is that the world's largest cake um, which you know, broke a record in 2005, apologies for the gritty images. Um, it wasn't made by building a really large oven, um, analogous to perhaps a supercomputer, rather regular run of the mill um, ovens um, across citizens in the city of, of Las Vegas were used to make regular size cakes and to assemble those into a much larger cake. And um, there are a number of research applications that fit this, but if you've got computation that can be run as many independent tasks and communicated in such a way, then a computing system that might distribute that work across many computers um, can give you significant advantages if your work can be expressed as fewer smaller tasks versus really large tasks like we see in classical supercomputing, high performance computing, MPI based simulations. Um, first of all, if, if each of your tasks needs one core or a few cores, um, across a really large system, just by you know, mathematics and statistics, there's generally going to be a shorter wait if there's sort of a regular turnover of slots across many users and types of jobs. And users can reach a peak uh, throughput amount in say cores in use across all of the running jobs faster. There's no special programming required. 
Um, if each of your jobs uses one core, if you're a researcher, you don't have to implement any multi-threading or internal parallelism. And so things that have even started just on a laptop and are taking too long can generally be easily transitioned to a high throughput computing system. There's easier recovery from failure because if one of these tasks or cores or computers fails in any way, jobs running elsewhere don't have to be affected and can continue. And so in a distributed high throughput computing system, you're also hoping then that there's some automated detection of this and requeuing, um, which is part of what Condor provides. Um, generally though, the number of concurrently running jobs is much more important and things like CPU speed and homogeneity are less important because it doesn't really matter if some of your jobs run faster or slower than the others, it matters much more how fast you can compute through the whole set of tasks by running them in as many places as possible. And OSG is part of how you can really expand to an extreme extent the idea of running in as many places as possible. So when we uh, meet with researchers as facilitators in my team, um, our question is always, is it HTC-able? And this usually can be discerned fairly easily. I'll talk in a little more detail in a later presentation about how we do this. Like I said, there are a number of, of applications, especially in research domains like life sciences and social sciences that are doing some form of data analysis um, or even parameter sweep type simulations or, or other types of simulations with multiple starting points. Um, as a campus, we've also pioneered the idea of research computing facilitation. This is terminology that arose in Wisconsin. Um, and on our campus, when our local computing entity, CHTC, which is also the home of Condor Development and one of the main partners in PATH, um, when we were deemed to be the core research computing service, we had an injection of funds that included um, capacity for centralized HPC system, that's actually our smaller system, and enhancement of our high throughput computing system. And what we noticed, because we meet with every researcher and point them to the right type of computing mode for their work and, and scalability requirements, we noticed that, for example, in the life sciences and social sciences, nearly all of the computing work that's being done in those domains is high throughput computing at its core. It's lots of tasks that can often be broken up into independent pieces. Um, and even in the physical sciences and engineering, which is you know, the domains that have driven traditional high performance computing, we saw that a majority of the demand that they had when they had access to a scalable high throughput computing system was also being executed in high throughput rather than needing a traditional high performance computing system. And um, this trend of an increase in, in requirements for high throughput computing as more and more research domains and researchers are, are coming to scalable computing. This realization that much of it is high throughput computing has been reflected in the National Academy of Sciences report, which Marone also alluded to. Um, and in that report, you can see several sort of primary um, conclusions. One that Marone mentioned, many fields are increasingly relying on high throughput computing and have high throughput computing type computational work. Um, but also that the scale that might be required for high throughput computing can exceed what a typical university can expect to provide on their own. And so OSG plays a significant role in, in bringing large scale computing across what might be multiple campuses of capacity to the fingertips of researchers. Um, and then finally that um, we really need to broaden the accessibility and utility of investments in large scale computing to make sure that high throughput as well as high performance workloads are able to run on them. And one of the ways you can do this even now, even with a traditional HPC system is through contributing it to um, the open science grid and connecting your researchers. So what is the open science grid? Um, it's really a consortium of researchers, um, organizations of researchers and institutions of various types who share computing and data resources for the purpose of scalable distributed high throughput computing. So there are um, well over a hundred different sites um, and institutions that provide resources, some of them on behalf of a, collab a large collaboration, um, some of them just as their individual campus, like a core research computing center. And OSG effectively, you know, operates software, creates software that allows these resources to be pooled together like one large virtual cluster for use by researchers. And like I said, you'll hear more about OSG, but the, the people who benefit from from OSG are largely individual researchers and research groups, even multi-institutional collaborations, some of them very large, who operate some of their own infrastructure and OSG software instances. 
Um, resource providers tend to be academic institutions and national laboratories, some of whom um, you know, serve researchers broadly across their campus or um, provide specific support for multi-institutional collaborations. And science gateways can use OSG as a compute backend as well. Um, I also briefly mentioned earlier, but we do have support specifically for CC Star Compute Awards and really any other proposals that, that you might be pursuing. Um, for CC Star Awards in particular, there's a requirement to share 20% of funded resources. And so like Marone said, we've done quite a bit to make sure that we can provide support letters and make sure that the pathway to sharing resources of newly funded CC Star Awards is as easy as possible. So um, that's an overview of how these services kind of play together in order to help you serve distributed high throughput your computing on your campus and beyond. And you'll get a bit more detail about each of these as we move forward into the following presentations.